there guys and girls, Mike here coming at you yet again from Badlands Paintball. Uh, well recently we actually had another request from one of our viewers. Uh, they wanted to see a tech and maintenance video uh, for the BT Omega. Um, the BT Omega and especially uh, the Kill House uh, variant of the BT Omega has been really really popular lately. Um, so I'm not really surprised that we're getting a tech video for this one. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take a look at the BT Omega. We're actually going to um, uh, tech the kill house variant uh, of that Omega today. Uh, the internals and everything are the exact same, pulling it all parts the same, so we're gonna have no issues there. Uh, so before we actually get to teching this marker, make sure you have all the Allen keys that you're gonna need. Uh, make sure you've got your manual with you, uh, any sort of spare O-rings that you might have to swap out on the inside, and get yourself some paper towel and oil as well. If you have that oil, if you have your Allen keys, paper towel, spare stuff, you're good to go. Come on in a little bit closer here, and we'll tech this Kill House Omega. Alright people, so we've got the Kill House Omega in front of us here. So the first thing we're going to do is just strip off the barrel. Um, now the barrels are actually attached uh, to the shrouds themselves, uh, both for the Kill House Omega and the original. So you can just actually twist those off and shift them right off to the side. Now we can't entirely remove our uh, stock. You can remove the rear stock from the post, but you know what, we're not going to bother with that. We'll keep it together for now. And we're just going to split everything else on this piece. Now I do have my Allen keys here, I would actually suggest having two of the same size Allen key. Uh, for all your individual body screws, you're only going to need one, but I find for the trigger frame screws, uh, because it's a composite frame, um, it's really nice actually that they have on the back side, your screws also have, uh, or the nuts themselves, have space for an Allen key. So you can actually put an Allen key in one side, an Allen key in the other, and counter twist each other and make it that much easier to get them out, and make sure you don't strip uh, your composite grip frame here. So I do have those two screws there um, and that's going to get my mag off, my grip frame off, uh, and the rest of, of my screws in the grip frame. And sorry, two Allen keys. Uh, so before we get on to anything else, we are going to want to remove the feed neck. The feed neck is easily removed by pressing on the button on the side here. And when you press that button, you can actually shift the feed neck right off the gun there. So it actually just slides across the rails. So I'll shift that off to this side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove my magazine here. Now the magazine um, does not unfortunately have the Allen keys uh, on the opposite side here, the Allen key uh, nuts. Uh, so you're just gonna have to go from the front side and twist those out. So there's two screws here, one, and two that we can remove, and then we can actually shift this magazine right off the front of the gun. Now you can also entirely split the magazine if you want to, um, and that's uh, using a screwdriver to pop these four bottom screws as well. But we're just gonna slide it off the front here by removing those two screws, just like so. So really easily removable front magazine. Those two screws are the same length, so you can put them in either one. We'll shift that off to the side. Next we do have our grip frame here itself. Um, now I'm going to stick one uh, Allen key in the front side here, or in the back side I should say, and then go from the front side and twist these Allen key screws right out. So there's one, Perfect. We'll get the second, stick it in there just like so, flip it over and go at this one. And that's two. Perfect. Now before we can actually pull this grip frame right off, even though our screws are removed, you do have to remove the nuts from the back side. Uh, so there's one nut uh, in the rear here and the other nut in the front. If you can't actually pull them out, just push them from the front side with your Allen key and it'll pop out the back. Once those nuts and screws are removed, now you can actually slide the trigger frame right off. Um, I'm gonna keep an eye on these by actually threading my screw right back in to that specialty nut so that we know they're in a safe space. And shift those off to the side. 
Now, another thing that you can do if you want to, to completely get this grip frame out of the way, is you can actually unscrew it from the ASA itself. And we're going to do that right now, um, because you know what, that just makes everything that much lower profile for us, easier to work with. So again, I'm just twisting out our two screws on the bottom of the ASA, one in the front, one in the back, and that's going to remove uh, this ASA and braided line from the trigger frame itself. Just again, so we can get the trigger frame right out of the way. So I'm going to twist those out here before we can separate this. There's the front one done, the back one. And there's the front. Perfect. So now I can remove that trigger frame all together. Keep those screws in a safe place. The front one's actually slightly shorter than the back. So thread those a little bit into your trigger frame there in the correct space just so they don't get lost. Perfect. Now we can split our actual body itself here. So there are one, two, three, and four screws that you're gonna to have to remove to separate this clamshell. Before removing those uh, screws though, we are just going to pop off this rubber cap on our caulking handle, because that rubber cap is actually gonna keep us um, from removing uh, the left side clamshell when we need to. So I'll shift that off to the side, and now I'm gonna remove these four screws. So again, one, two, three, four, and we're gonna be able to split our clamshell. And four. So I've got those four screws loosened off, so now I can actually remove my clamshell here, just like so. The four screws can stay in place, or of course you can remove them. Now my stock's actually popped out here, uh, but your stock can be just shifted off to the side, removed. You've got your uh, rammer spring, your buffer o-ring, as well as your rammer pin in the back, you're gonna to wanna to remove those, shift them off to the side. Sometimes this rammer spring may need to be replaced or the rammer pin itself, or of course this buffer o-ring. So check the rammer spring, check the pin for any dents or bends, and make sure that buffer o ring is still in good condition. At the front, uh, we've actually got our barrel adapter here, which can be removed. You've got your detent. Now the nice thing about the BT detents, they have two different sizes essentially here, uh, but really uh, two complete halves. So, you know, if one side wears out, you can actually flip it around and go with the other side instead. So that's really nice. You've got a dual detent, just sits right up front here. Uh, you're gonna wanna make sure this is in good condition. If your detent is damaged uh, or needs, well again, needs repairs, it's not gonna be able to keep your ball in the breach until you're ready to fire. So you're gonna end up getting balls dropping into your barrel, then you're gonna double feed, you're not gonna have a good time. So if your detent is in bad condition, make sure you swap it out. So detents off to the side there, our rammer spring as well as our spring pin and buffer o-ring are off to the side. Now I can actually shift everything to the side here, both my bolt and my rammer, and that's going to give me access to my linkage arm. The linkage arm is what connects the front bolt to the rear rammer. Uh, make sure this is in okay condition, but generally speaking, it should be okay. If it is either bent or broken, you will need to replace that. Now I've got our actual rammer here itself with the caulking handle on the inside there. We can shift that caulking handle out, shift the rammer out and the bolt out as well. So the most important places to clean are gonna be in the actual breech area here and you wanna make sure all your dirt and grind is cleaned out of your rammer area and the back. Once those are cleaned out, you're gonna to wanna to actually clean the rammer itself. Your internal block here, you don't have to clean, that just stays inside of the rammer. But you wanna clean the rammer oil the front o-ring, clean your bolt, oil the front o-ring. You do not need to oil the entire rammer itself, you do not need to oil the entire bolt itself. Just make sure they're clean and make sure those o-rings are oiled and you're gonna be a happy camper. Once your rammer area in the back here is cleaned out, we can actually place a rammer back where it's supposed to be. Once your breech area here is cleaned out, you can actually place the bolt where it's supposed to be. Perfect. 
and now we can start installing everything else. Um, so again, with this rear rammer, your internal silver block is going to have to be positioned correctly and that, that hole uh, in the internal part and your actual outer housing of the rammer, those holes line up so that we can then shift in our caulking handle. This caulking handle also has a hole in it. That hole should be positioned so that it allows your rammer spring to shift right through the uh, rammer itself and through the hole. So that hole should be facing the back of the gun. So we're going to shift that right in there. Perfect. Then we can install our rammer spring and pin as well as the buffer. Now we're going to want to get our linkage arm back out. We're going to attach that linkage arm to the front bolt first and then line it up so it sticks into the rear rammer. Once you've got that in place, you can actually shift everything right back over so the linkage arm is facing perfectly up towards the top of your gun. Now we're going to reinstall our detent once we know that it's in good enough condition. It's actually just going to sit right in the front here, right underneath the bolt itself. The bolt will actually bend it down. That's how you know it's going to be in the correct place. You're going to want to reinstall your barrel adapter. Just like so. Shift the front bolt up again. Sometimes your detent will pop out. Just again, make sure all your parts are in the correct place, including this detent, before you put your clamshell back on again. Okay, so with all of our internals in the right place, uh, with our bolt, rammer, linkage arm, detent, um, and barrel adapter there, as well as our rammer spring, rammer pin, um, and the buffer o-ring, those are all in place. We're just going to want to make sure our stock's installed. So we're going to install that pin into the center hole on that stock. I'm just going to shift the stock up, forward, and get it into its correct grooves. Once you have that stock and its correct grooves, now we can bring our clamshell in and place it right over top where it should be. Great, so hold everything tight there, and then you're going to go around to your four screws. I'm going to start with the bottom front, tighten that down a bit, and I'll move to the back top. Tighten that down some. Back bottom now. And then the front top. Once you have those four screws reasonably tight, just go around, give them a firm tighten on each one, make sure everything's clamped down correctly. Perfect, so now our stock's in there and all the rest of our internals are in. Now we're going to want to bring in our trigger frame, slide that into place, get our screws back out here and nuts. Each of the nuts are installed into the back side. One and two. And our screws go on the front side. So again, I'm going to use an Allen key to hold the back side steady. We'll install our front screw. Tighten it down. That's one. Perfect. Shift over to my back screw there. Tighten that down, that's two. Now once we have these trigger frame screws tightened down, we're going to want to reattach our ASA right here to the bottom of our trigger frame. So we're going to loosen those out. Get my ASA in the correct position and slide those screws right through. Small one on the front, longer one in the rear. Make sure it's in the right position and tighten those down as well. One and two. Now once you've tightened these down, we're going to move right on over to the magazine. Reinstall that. Bam. 
and those are both done. Slot on our magazine here. Make sure the screws are out of the way first. Then slide on your mag. Get to the position you want it. You can actually have it shifted to any number of positions, but uh, the look is definitely great when you slot it all the way to the back. Reinstall each one of those screws. Tighten them down. Once these are tightened, we're going to want to get our little rubber nub back onto the caulking handle, which we shifted off to the side here. Reinstall our feed neck by pressing down on that button there and shifting it right over top of the rail so it's going to cover up. You've got the hole. You want to shift it far enough that it covers up that hole, locks into place. Now you can reinstall your barrel. Once that barrel started all the way on, you are good to go. All right guys, so at this point, your Kill House Omega should be squeaky clean. Uh, everything's gonna be running great inside of this thing, uh, so you can hit the field without any sort of worry. Now, if you do have any questions about the Kill House Omega or you wanna see one of them in person, uh, definitely check out any of our nine locations across Canada. Uh, like I always say, we've got tons of guys and girls in there that are gonna be super helpful. I'm uh, really stoked to get one of these paintball guns in your hands. Now, if you can't get into any of our stores and visit our friendly staff, you can definitely check us out on our webpage at www.badlandspaintball.com. You can see the Killer Host Omega as well as the original Omega and all the other paintball guns that Badlands offers. It's a great place to get your paintball gear. Now, while you're online, definitely check us out on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Uh, there's tons of fun stuff going on there. We've got a lot of sweepstakes going on right now on Facebook. So it's a great opportunity to win some free stuff and everybody loves free stuff. Um, now, you're already watching this YouTube channel, uh, so hopefully you're liking this video. If you do enjoy the video, if it helped you out, definitely give us some love and hit the like button down there in the corner. But if all else fails, we really just want to hear from you guys, okay? So shoot us some comments, let us know what you liked about the video, what you think we could change, improve upon, what you want to see for the future. Um, so definitely give us some comments there, let us know what you think, and we can move on from there that much easier. Now. At the end of my videos, I always say, you know, the most important thing is getting on out there and playing some paintball. So do that, do it soon, get this Kill Host Omega in your hands, throw your mask on, and get on out there and hit the paintball field. I'll check you guys out soon.